For today's photo scavenger hunt, you will be looking to take photographs that highlight color and emphasis. First, a reminder that color is one of the seven elements of art. Elements of art are the ingredients that an artist can use when creating their artwork. Just like a chef combines several different ingredients into their finished dish to create something that is delicious, artists use different elements like line, shape, and color to create their finished, hopefully well-rounded looking work of art. Let's talk a little bit more about color. Color is defined by the way in which our eye perceives the light that is reflecting off the surface of an object. Color itself has three properties. The first is known as hue. This is the color's name. Next, we have the color's intensity, or how strong that color is. Third, we have value. This refers to how light or how dark a color is. How does color work? What's happening when I look at a red apple? Why do I see it as being red? Well, it's quite simple. When the sun shines its light down on Earth, that light contains all of the colors of the visible spectrum. Within the white light of the sun are all the different wavelengths of all the colors that we see around us. What happens when that white light hits an apple is the apple is absorbing all of those wavelengths of light with the exception of the color red. That red wavelength of light is then reflected off of the apple into our eyes. That wavelength of light then enters our eye through the pupil, traveling through the lens into the back of the eye to a portion of the eye known as the retina. The retina is the light sensitive lining of the eye. Within the retina, the cell structure contains two separate cells known as rods and cones. Cones are the photosensors in the eye responsible for how we see light and how we see color. There are three separate cones. One interprets the color red, another interprets the color green, and then finally there's a cell that interprets the color blue. When a wavelength of light reflects into our eye, our cone cells interpret that signal, sending that information down the optic nerve into the brain. Our brain then unscrambles that code and says, oh, I'm looking at a red apple right now. There is so much science that I find fascinating behind how color works that I shared a quick video with you. It explains what's going on when you see the color red off an apple really, really well. It's only about three minutes long and it's definitely worth taking a look at. I shared a link with it to you in this slideshow and I shared this slideshow with you in the Google Classroom. Highly recommend, super interesting. Color itself is often organized into what is known as the color wheel. Here's an example of a 12 color wheel here to the left of your screen. Colors are often divided into three common color families, the first of which is called the primary colors. These are the colors red, yellow, and blue. As you may remember from elementary school, red, yellow, and blue are the primary colors because you cannot combine any other colors to create these three. These three colors, however, are used to create all the other colors that you see in front of you now. In fact, every color on the planet that you have ever seen ever is broken down somehow into the combination of red, yellow, and blue. The secondary colors are created by mixing equal amounts of two of the primaries. These colors are orange, green, and violet. The nice thing about the color wheel is how well it is organized. Let's take the color violet, for example. In order to make this secondary color, we need, we need to combine two equal amounts of the primaries. If we combine red and blue, we create the color violet, which is why violet is placed equally between the colors red and blue on the color wheel. The same is true for green, which is created by mixing blue and yellow, which is why it's located directly in between those two colors. And then lastly, we have orange, which is created by mixing equal amounts of yellow and red. Again, placed directly in between those two primaries. The third color family are known as the tertiary colors. These are those colors with two names, like red orange or yellow orange. Colors like yellow green, blue green, blue violet, and red violet 
are created by mixing one of the secondaries with a little bit more of one of those two primaries. So for example, to create red-violet, we would take our violet, which has a little bit of blue and a little bit of red in it. We would then add more red, which is why red-violet is located closer to red than it is to blue on the color wheel. So to know how to make a tertiary color, you simply need to look at the name. Red-orange is orange with a little bit more red in it. It's important to understand how the color wheel is organized because knowing that information can help you combine your colors in creative ways. These are known as the color schemes. Color schemes are ways that artists have figured out how color works really well together. A simple example would be complementary colors. These are colors located directly across from one another on the color wheel. There's also analogous to color schemes, which are three colors side by side, triadic color schemes, which create a triangle on the color wheel, and so on and so on. Knowing how to use color and to combine them in color schemes can be a really simple and effective way to use color really nicely. Let's shift our focus now to our principle of the day, emphasis. A reminder that uh, principles of design are the recipes that artists follow to create good art. All artists strive to create really great works of art. And one of the simple ways to do that is to try to create as many different principles of design in their artwork as possible. One of those principles is emphasis. Emphasis this is the creation of a focal point in a work of art, which draws the viewer's eye to a particular area of the artwork. You can see an example here in this photo. My eye is drawn very quickly to that yellow flower, making that flower the focal point. So a focal point is where our eye is drawn, usually first in a work of art. Here in the example on your screen, I would consider the focal point the face of Edvard Munch's scream. This man on the bridge is the focal point of the work of art. No matter where I look in this artwork, my eye is typically drawn back to his face, making it the focal point. How do you create a focal point in your photography today? There's a couple different ways to do that. One is to utilize contrast. We covered this yesterday. Contrast can help you create a focal point by having you put something in your photograph that is very different from the other things around it, such as this red apple surrounded by green apples. Contrast is one of the easiest ways to create a focal point in your work of art. Another option would be to utilize something called isolation. Focal points can be created if you set something apart from other things in your work of art. This little birdie down here is all by his lonesome. My eye is drawn to him first because he's separated from the other birds above him, making him the focal point of this photograph. Another option for focal points is to use something called placement. Simply by placing something somewhere near the center of your photo, you're going to create a focal point. My eye is drawn very quickly to this woman here in the painting because she is slightly off center from the middle of this photograph. You don't have to place something directly in the center of your lens today, but placing it near the center of the photograph is a great way to use placement to create a uh, focal point. Another option is something called convergence. Convergence is similar to placement but it's different in that it uses implied lines to draw the viewer's eye towards a single spot. So in this painting here to the right, convergence tells me that there are several different lines that are kind of imaginary that are drawing my eye inward towards this baby on the woman's lap. That baby is the focal point, and I know this because if you look at all these different lines, the line of the oar, the line of the man's arm, this angle of the sail, and even the gaze of the person looking at the baby, those lines are converging here at the center of the photograph, or the painting. My eye is drawn right to the center because all of those lines are converging on the middle. Lastly, you could use something unusual to create a focal point. By placing something unusual or different from the normal thing you would expect in your photograph somewhere, my eye is going to be quickly drawn to that thing that's slightly off. In this painting here by Rene Magritte, the apple is totally unexpected. And because of that, my eye continues to look at it. I'm trying to figure out what that apple is and why it's there. 
So using something unusual in a photograph is a quick way to attract the viewer's attention and establish your focal point.